Meet Uranus, the butt of all space jokes, the overlooked gas giant, the seventh planet from the sun. Despite it having 27 moons, a ring system, and orbiting the sun almost on its side, it has received very little interest in terms of NASA missions. The only mission to study Uranus was Voyager 2 on its way past in 1986 as it headed towards the outer solar system. Along with poor old Neptune, these two ice giants are equally the least explored planets in our solar system. Although many missions to study these planets have been proposed, as of 2019 they have all been rejected in favor of more interesting worlds such as Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter. But what if I told you that Uranus is actually one of the most interesting and bizarre planets in the solar system? I'm your host, Alan, and you're watching Elder Fox. Let's start with the moons of Uranus. Out of 27 in total, five are considered major moons. However, these five moons are some of the most interesting in the solar system. Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon are all considered airless and made from rock and ice, yet they possess some of the strangest topographies in the solar system. Miranda, in particular, boasts the Verona Rupes, the highest cliff in the solar system measuring a massive 20 kilometers high, over twice the size of Mount Everest. Scientists cannot fully explain the strange features on the surface of Miranda, yet the mainstream theory is that in the past, this moon had high levels of geological activity caused by the gravity of Uranus and other surrounding bodies. Due to Uranus's near sideways orientation, only Miranda's southern hemisphere was visible to Voyager 2 when it arrived. However, what it discovered was shocking. Three giant racetrack-like structures were pictured. These are known as coronae, each at at least 120 miles wide and up to 12 miles deep. Coronae are thought to be formed by warm upwellings of material beneath the surface, something that must have happened in the past on Miranda. The three structures were named Elsinore, Inverness, and Arden, named after locations in Shakespeare's plays. The moon itself is thought to be made up of 60% water ice. Water ice is the only compound to have been detected on the surface, though it is speculated that methane, ammonia, carbon monoxide, or nitrogen may also exist at 3% concentrations. If Miranda isn't interesting enough, the moon Ariel, very similar to Miranda, is again made up mainly of ice and rock. However, due to the high levels of salt theorized to exist there, and therefore the lower freezing temperatures, some scientists believe Ariel could be home to a subsurface ocean or a so-called water mantle. Umbriel, Uranus's darkest moon, is the third largest and fourth most massive of Uranian moons. An interesting fact about this moon is that due to Uranus's almost sideways orbit, each half of the moon spends 42 years in total darkness and then 42 years in total sunlight. The surface is slightly bluish in color, while fresh impact craters, such as Wunda Crater, are even bluer. The crater is named after Wunda, a dark spirit of Australian Aboriginal mythology. Wunda has a prominent albedo feature on its floor which takes the shape of a ring of bright material at least 10 kilometers in radial width. The reason for its brightness, which stands out from the very dark composition of the moon as a whole, is unknown. It may be a deposit of carbon dioxide ice. Titania, the largest moon of Uranus, is again very interesting. Titania may be differentiated into a rocky core surrounded by an icy mantle. The pressure in the center of Titania is about 0.58 gigapascals. The current state of the icy mantle is unclear. If the ice contains enough ammonia or other antifreeze, Titania may have a subsurface ocean at the core mantle boundary. The thickness of this ocean, if it exists, is up to 31 miles and its temperature is around minus 83 degrees Celsius. However, the present internal structure of Titania depends heavily on its thermal history, which is poorly known. A perfect reason to launch a mission there immediately. Last but not least, Oberon is the most dense moon of Uranus and the most heavily cratered. 
Like the other moons, it is possible Oberon has an icy mantle. Although we can make various theories about these moons, the truth is that roughly only half of each moon has ever been pictured, and the pictures aren't very detailed. Uranus itself can be observed from telescopes and was discovered by William Herschel in 1781. Although he initially believed it to be a comet, the object was soon universally accepted as a new planet. In recognition of his achievement, King George III gave Herschel an annual stipend of 200 pounds on the condition that he moved to Windsor so the royal family could look through his telescopes. That would be the equivalent of 24,000 pounds in 2018. Before the Cassini mission was launched, during the mission validation, it was proposed by some that it could go on and fly by Uranus after visiting Saturn. This proposal was scrapped in favor of destroying Cassini in Saturn's atmosphere. On its way into Saturn, however, Cassini turned around and took this picture of Uranus, just a pale blue dot a long way away. Although a sad day for the exploration of Uranus and its moons, Cassini was a huge success, picturing the methane lakes of Saturn's moon Titan. Hopefully in the future, a similar mission can be done for Uranus, and not to forget its ice giant twin Neptune. Thanks for watching Elder Fox. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe for more, and remember to click the bell so you never miss an upload.